Here's an application of the conditional expectation formula with geometric random variables. Our scenario, we start by considering sequences of coin flips. For our coin, the probability of heads is going to be equal to P, where P is between 0 and 1 inclusive. Then, the probability of a tails is 1 minus P. We consider the random variable, X sub K, so x sub k is going to take one of our sequences. It will return the number of flips that it takes to obtain the first run of k consecutive heads. Our problem, I want to find e sub k, the expected value of x sub k. So e sub k is just going to be the average number of flips that it takes to get to our first run of k heads in a row. Now, when k is equal to 1, we're just trying to find the number of flips to get to the first head. That's familiar. That's going to be a geometric random variable. So let's note, if I want to know the probability that x sub 1 is equal to k, well, if x sub 1 is equal to k, that means we have our first head occurring on the kth flip. So that means all flips up to that point are going to be tails. Now the probability for a tails is 1 minus p. We raise it to the k minus first power, and then we multiply by a p for the probability of the heads. That means this probability is p times 1 minus p raised to the k minus 1. That's going to give us the distribution for a geometric random variable. Now, if p is equal to 0, no matter how many flips we do, we're never going to get a heads. So e of x sub 1 is going to be undefined. Otherwise, the mean of a geometric random variable is just going to be 1 over p. For a formula in general, e sub k is going to be given by 1 over p plus 1 over p squared, all the way up through 1 over p of the k, assuming p is non-zero. Now, if we consider okay, our formula for different values of p, so if I have a fair coin, p is equal to a half, and we get the following table. So this is our, the length of our consecutive run of heads. We note, as I move to get a consecutive run, one longer, we're roughly doubling the number that we had from before. When our heads appear less often. So for instance, if I have p equal to 0.1, we note, okay, we have the following table. In this case, as we go down our list, things are growing by an order of magnitude. So here, we're roughly multiplying by 2. Here, we're roughly multiplying by 10. Okay, in general, okay, roughly, you're going to multiply by 1 over p. Okay, that's going to be because the 1 over p of the k term is going to dominate all the rest of the terms. Now, what does the conditional expectation formula say? If I want to compute the expected value of the random variable x, I compute the expected value of the random variable given by the expected value of x conditioned on y. Now, this is notation. What it really says is, we're consider all values that y can take, we sum. We consider the expected value of x conditioned on our random variable y equal to our given value of y. So this is going to be a number. And we weight with the probability of our little y occurring. Now in our case, our x is going to be x of k, okay, the number of flips to get to our first run of k heads in a row. Our y is going to be the flip that occurs after our first run of k minus 1 heads in a row. So note that flip that happens afterwards, if it's a heads, we have what we want, k heads in a row. If we get a tails, then we just got to start over from scratch. Now, let's take a look at the formula. So if we get a heads in this flip after the first k minus 1 heads in a row, the okay, probability of that's going to be p. What about the expected number of flips, given that that last one is going to be a heads? 
Well, we're getting our k heads in a row. So the expected number of flips that we need will be the expected number to get k minus one in a row. And then I just have to add one more. So e to the k minus one plus one. What happens if that flip is a tails? Well, then we reset. So the idea is that tail is not gonna help us build k heads in a row. So we're gonna have one minus p for our tails. Then the expected number that we need to get k heads in a row, given that that was a tails. Well, it takes us the expected number of flips to get to k minus one heads in a row to get where we're at. We had one for the tails, and then since we're starting over, we're just gonna have to add on the expected number of flips to get k heads in a row. That's just starting from scratch. So this is gonna give us our formula. Now, if I clean this up, okay, I'm gonna have p e sub k equals e sub k minus one plus one. If I divide by p, we get our recursive formula here. Now, we know that e sub one is equal to one over p, that's just a geometric random variable, it's mean. For e sub two, we use our formula. So for e sub two, we're gonna put a one over p in here and I get one over p plus one over p squared. For e sub three, we have one over p plus one over p. E sub two, we put in one over p plus one over p squared and then we get one over p plus one over p squared plus one over p cubed and we see a pattern emerging. To get our formula, we work inductively. So we have e sub one is equal to one over p. That's our base case. In general, if I assume e sub k minus one equals the sum of one over p plus one over p squared, all the way up through one over p of the k minus one. We use our recursive formula, we substitute, and then we note we get our formula from the first board.